Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a what we eat for you. This is a Sunday breakfast edition. On Sundays, both my husband and I are usually home from work and we're just hanging out, enjoying family time or sometimes we're off doing stuff. Lately, husband's been off hunting, so it all just depends. I like to make us a good, hearty, warm breakfast. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking and canning and preserving on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I would love to have you as a part of my family. All right guys, let's get this kitchen dirty with some Sunday breakfasts. All right guys, for today's breakfast, I'm gonna be utilizing some of this peppered bacon that I had cooked off, my croissants here, and my Swiss cheese. So you guessed it, we're making bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. First thing I'm gonna do is get my heat on, get my pans at like a seven. All right, and then I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna cut them in half so I can get them nice and toasted. Some people might be able to leave like a gap there so you could fold it, but I'm just going to completely take it apart. I'm just going to go ahead and make all of these because if we have extra, then we have extra. Then I won't have to make breakfast tomorrow. Husband doesn't mind eating the same thing twice in a row. All right, so bread sliced. Oh, one broke, what a shame. Um, okay. Um, and then I'm going to put the croissant down. Now, I'm not putting butter on these because croissants are literally made of butter, <laughs> like full of butter. So you do not need to add butter to the croissants. They will toast beautifully as is. All right, for this cheese. This is quite a bit of cheese that I don't know if I'm going to go through all of this. So I'm actually going to take half of it and saran wrap it. This saran wrap I bought when I was working at Applebee's. My manager did not mind if the crew bought at cost and then you just paid them cash. So it was a good opportunity for me to get restaurant style saran wrap. So that's pretty toasted. I'm gonna call that done. You see how quickly that got done? Do a little more on this side. All right, so now this is wrapped up, ready to go, and this will keep a lot longer than if I just have a container that I'm opening and closing all the time. And whenever I go through that other one, I have this one ready to go. Another thing I'm gonna do is just write the date that I opened it. So today is the 6th. That way just for my own labeling system. So now I know when I put it in there and when I need to use it up. The croissants are, that's why they're so good. They're full of with butter, past the butter. All right, so we're just gonna keep those rotating. I got my cheese. Probably just gonna keep it in this sandwich container for now. Here's my pre-cooked bacon that I have. All I gotta do is heat it up. So I'll heat this up whenever those croissants are done. And I might probably need more. Well. Another thing I'm gonna do for breakfast is cut up this Dixie melon. You could totally heat this bacon up in the microwave too if you wanted to. I just have my pan hot and ready so I'm just gonna utilize it. Nice, 
so while that's cooking, cutting this melon. This is kind of like a cantaloupe. Scrape out the seeds. That's pretty warm. I'm just trying to heat this up. Don't really want to cook them anymore. I've got eight sandwiches. I think I'm going to do like this. Another big pan of bacon. Let me turn off this back one. All right, our bacon is out. Let's get our eggs in there. I got eight sandwiches to make, so I'm gonna do four eggs at a time. And I'm gonna pop them in the eye, flatten them out. Hopefully they won't stick. All right, washed my hands after cracking open those eggs and we're going to finish the other half of this Dixie melon. All right, I'm going to flip them real quick. Ah. Now is a great opportunity to salt and pepper them. I am cooking this in pepper bacon grease, so maybe I shouldn't do too much pepper. This is also the moment I'm going to put the cheese on them. I'm going to put a lid on this and give them just a couple of minutes. Guys, this melon's so good. Oh. My kids could knock out this whole thing by himself. I'm gonna put a little bit of mayonnaise on ours. We like mayonnaise on our breakfast sandwiches. I don't know if the kids can eat all this. This is a quite a sandwich. Perfect timing, our cheese is melted. put just a smidgen more bacon grease in there to help with my next round of eggs. There's that sandwich guys. Oh. 
kids are spoiled. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Ah! Bad pan. Um, breakfast is served. I'm actually going to turn it off. And that, my friends, is what's for breakfast. Um. I just wanted to show you guys what I'm going to do with the leftovers here. I just assembled them without the mayonnaise, and I'm going to put them in a Ziploc. And then I'll just probably microwave them for a minute and put the mayonnaise on them that way. Oh, oh no, one escaped. What a shame. Um. Try and get as much air as I can out without flattening them. There we go. Going in the fridge for later. Good morning, everyone. So for breakfast today, I think I'm gonna make some biscuits and gravy. I have a lot of this peppered bacon, so I'm going to be making peppered bacon gravy instead of sausage. And it's gonna come together super fast. And I thought I'd bring it along and show you what I'm gonna do. So first thing I'm gonna do is make some self-rising flour. I need to make up a bunch of it and have it ready. So all I'm doing is two cups of flour and then one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt. So we're just gonna kinda mix that in. I also have my oven set at 500 degrees right now because I'm going to be making two ingredient biscuits. So that's self-rising flour and heavy cream and they get cooked at 500 degrees. All right, so we're going to put this in my bowl here. There we go. All right, and then let me get my pan going here for our bacon. All right, I'm gonna put it down on like a six because you don't want it too high. This is the peppered bacon I recently just got. I vacuum sealed it all and, well, I diced it and then froze it already diced. This one does have the seal broken. So I'm sure it's something I did to mess that up. Well, it looks like it's crinkled down here. So I just put this one as the one I need to use first. So we're gonna open it up. And then I put it I put it in the pan completely frozen. Okay, so just put it in there frozen and then it'll start cooking and you can break it up that way. Okay, and for the biscuits, I'm gonna measure out about a cup and a half of heavy cream. This is one I just picked up from Walmart, heavy whipping cream. It works good because there's lots of fat in it. So like with the biscuits, you would add a fat usually and then water or buttermilk or something. So this way you can add just heavy cream. I'm gonna save like half a cup, just in case I don't need it. And this is cold straight from the fridge. You're just gonna mix this up. You can already tell it's still kind of dry, especially down there at the bottom. So I'm probably gonna end up adding all of this. And then if I need to add a splash more, I can. There we go. 
go. I just want it to look and kind of come together with no dry spots. I would say that's pretty spot on. And then if you have it where this is all good moisture, but it's really dry down here, just add a little bit of extra cream down to the bottom. But this is pretty good. This is exactly why I took the time when I first got this to dice all this bacon. So that way it can easily be cooked from frozen. It breaks up easily. Well, get a bag in there. There you go. Put that a little bit of flour. Pull your biscuit dough out on there. looking for about half an inch thickness. I'm going to try and keep them roughly a rectangle. I just like to cut mine in squares. You just want to go straight down and right back up though. You don't want to slice because that actually seals the biscuits so they won't rise. So even with the cookie cutter, you want to go straight up and down. You do not want to saw back and forth or twist. Now I'm just waiting for my pan to come out of my oven, and we'll get those in. Back over here to the bacon. I'm gonna put it down to like a five, because I want like some of these pieces that have just straight up fat. I want some of that to render. The bacon fat is what we're gonna use as the base to our roux. So for a roux, you need equal parts fat to flour. So this bacon grease is going to be our fat, so we want to make sure that a lot of this fat is rendered down into grease. And then I will get us a nice thick gravy. I'm also going to be using my home canned milk for this. This is some 2% that I canned last October, so a year ago. And with this canned milk, I do believe that it has a taste. Oh, there's our oven. It kind of tastes more like evaporated milk, so I just use this milk strictly for cooking. So it works really great for a use like this, like gravy. All right, let's get our pan out and get our biscuits in. All right, these might be a little close, but I kind of like it when they bake together. It's not stubbornness at all that doesn't want me to get a new pan. All right, let's get this in the oven. All right, I'm gonna do 10 minutes and then check them. All right, I'm gonna let this go a little more. As soon as you add the flour, you're not gonna have any more time to render down any more of this fat. So now is the only time you have to get this cooked down and get your bacon crispy. So take your time and make sure your bacon texture is where you want it before you add all your flour. Hey guys, I am at the point where I'm ready to add my flour. Most of that fat has gotten cooked down. 
There's a good layer of grease down there. We got some good crusties on the bottom. The bacon's crispy, so she's ready. So I'm gonna add roughly three tablespoons of flour here. Let's see if we need more. You kind of want a thick paste. You see how that's still kind of loose, so we're gonna add more. One more tablespoon of flour here. And that flour, you wanna cook it out for like a minute. That's what's gonna help get rid of that flour taste. Let's open this can of milk that has been sitting on my shelf for a year. You heard the pop? No. I heard the pop. Release. So that's what it looks like. Some of the cream, just because it was 2%, gets on top. And then I always do a sniff test. Yeah, smells good. So it's, like I said, it turns out more like evaporated milk. My kids and husband can taste the difference between the canned milk and just regular milk from the jug, you know? So, which is okay. I mean, that's fair. So that's why I use it just for cooking. So I'm gonna add my milk. That's about three cups of milk. Whoa, I've got a bunch on my stove over there. I don't know why my stove is always messy. Okay. okay. I'm gonna add some salt to this. But I'm not gonna add any pepper yet because that was peppered bacon. I'm just gonna keep stirring this as it starts to heat up and boil and simmer then it will thicken up so you want to keep an eye on it and kind of go low and slow because you do not want your milk to scorch or burn it'll you'll taste it throughout your whole dish if you let something get burned all right our gravy is starting to thicken up you can tell as you stir it you can start pushing it around more, so that means it's getting thicker. So now is the real time where it's gonna start thickening up. Oh, just in time for our biscuits to be done. Let's finish this real quick. Once it's nice and thick, so I'm gonna keep letting it go. You just wanna keep stirring it. Beautiful, nice and thick. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. Let's check our biscuits. All right, let's see, this is what they look like. They look pretty good. I'm gonna call those done, turn off the oven. Put a little bit of butter on the top of them. Right as they come out. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna add a little more salt. Yes, I'm using the same spoon to stir it as I am to sample it. This is just food I'm cooking for my family. We all share germs. Like if I was cooking for friends, it would be different. If I was cooking in a restaurant, it'd be different, but I'm not cooking in either of those. I'm cooking at home. Perfect, that's done. Our biscuits will look good. Oh yeah. And then our gravy. Here's our homemade peppered bacon gravy with homemade biscuits. Yum. Hi everybody. For this morning, the breakfast I'm gonna be making is some pumpkin pancakes. I still have two cups of pumpkin left over from when I did my pumpkin gooey butter cake. If you haven't seen that, I will link that below. Got the espresso coffee machine working there for a new cup of coffee. So I printed off a recipe. This is from the Preppy Kitchen. Have you guys seen his channel yet? He's only got like, you know, 
a million subscribers because he's just fantastic and he makes being in the kitchen fun. So go check him out if you haven't seen him yet. He's got a lot of great recipes. So him, I just looked it up. Here's his recipe. I'm adapting it just a little bit because I... See, he puts in all the spices and I have my pumpkin pie spice, so I'm gonna use that. And then they're do he's doing regular milk and I got this buttermilk. So uh, buttermilk goes great in baked goods, so we're gonna add this to our pumpkin pancakes. And then, because that's not enough, I have a packet here of the monkey bread sauce packet. I got a couple of hauls back. This came with some pre-cut cans of biscuit. So when you make monkey bread, you take biscuit dough, cut it up, roll it in the sauce, and then you bake it. And that's how you make monkey bread. Uh, my mom always called it monkey brains. <laughs> but I have this sauce packet and I use the biscuits for something else. And one of you had the suggestion to swirl this into pancakes. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're making like cinnamon swirl pumpkin pancakes. Oh yeah, yeah. So let's get in close and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so here's my setup. Got my pumpkin. Here's my pumpkin pie spice. And I will also leave this recipe linked below, guys, so you don't have to follow along here. You can just look it at the bottom. Oh, this also calls for regular sugar, and I have some homemade brown sugar that I'm going to use because I think that's going to go great with the pumpkin. So we're just going to open everything up. It's kind of nice to have everything open, ready to go, so when you start assembling, it doesn't take long. All right, but first, coffee. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna double this because I have two cups of pumpkin. This is for one cup, and two cups is about, or one can is roughly two cups, one small can. So I'm gonna do two cups of, or sorry, three cups of flour. And this is just all purpose. Okay, three cups of flour. Where are my spoons? This is two tablespoons of baking powder. I don't know about you guys, but my kids were up super early this morning. Like, ridiculously early. Like, four o'clock. They, they're not feeling too good. Half a cup of brown sugar. They're not feeling too good and... Now they woke up real early to go, so they're feeling nice now. And Mama Baird's tired. All right, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. If you math that, that would be one and a half teaspoons. Uno. Dos. Tres. Yeah, that was a half teaspoon. Okay, one and a half. I thought I messed up there for a second. Counting the Spanish threw me off. All right, and then... I'm just gonna do a tablespoon of the pumpkin pie spice. Get that in there. And then that's it for the dry goods. So. My salt and my pumpkin spice lid. just to get it kind of incorporated. There we go. All right, and then for our wet ingredients, we're gonna add our pumpkin. Two cups of pumpkin puree. You could probably also use that pumpkin, the pumpkin pie mix if you got that. That's a good application in sweet goods like this because all that does is have the eggs and the cinnamon already in it. All right, and then we're going to do like a tablespoon of vanilla, a good chunk of vanilla, two cups of milk, so I'm choosing buttermilk. This is one stick of melted butter. And then two eggs. All right, double check my recipe. Yep, I got it all. all right, let's get this whisked up. 
It's like one of those things you got to be firm but gentle because if you go crazy, it's going to make a huge mess. But you still have to be able to mix it. Oh, look at that pretty color. I love pumpkin stuff. I'm not ready for eggnog and peppermint. I want to keep pumpkin. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're just going to mix that in there. Pour it in here. Make sure you're scraping all your bowls. Oops. Hey, it's not a good recipe if you don't make a mess with it, right? I'm telling you, I don't trust clean cooks. So I'm sorry. Get in there. Yeah. It's pretty thick. Now, if this is too thick for you, you always add more milk. I might add a little more. Cause this will puff up too so if you have a thick batter and then you have and then you cook it and it can get really thick and some people like super thick pancakes like mine a little thinner that's pretty good so i added probably about half a cup more milk all right so then i just have butter at the bottom of my skillets Add a scoop and then use the scoop to kind of spread it around. And then we're gonna take our monkey bread packet here, kind of scoot everything down, and then I'm just gonna cut like a corner. So that way it has a little hole I can use as a drizzle. Let's see if this works. Pretty good. We'll flip it over and see what that looks like. All right, now when checking pancakes, you can see the bubbles are starting to come up a little bit. But these ones are kind of hard to tell. I just like to kind of go around. one I don't think is quite done on this side because you see how it kind of still it sticks to the spatula it doesn't come up in one piece so that one's not ready guys I rinse my spatula a lot when I'm doing stuff that I have to flip to keep this edge nice and clean because that's how you get in there really good I cook just a smidgen more See this one, I think I got a little too big. That's okay, we'll just give it a little longer. I'm gonna wipe my spatula. Ow. Yeah. All right guys, I'm gonna call this one done. It's the top, like that sugar kind I got on there. So I don't know, maybe it'd be better to put it on the top when I flip it. Try and flip this big kahuna. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, look at that color. But yeah, you can see how the sauce just kind of oozes. It's not really swirling on the inside. So we'll see, we can probably adapt it. Now I'm usually more of a waffle person than a pancake person, because I don't like sitting here flipping every time. But my waffle iron actually broke on me a couple months ago. Mid waffle, if you believe it, like how rude. Just quit in the middle of its shift, you know? All right, let's look at a little brown. So I'm gonna turn it down just a smidgen. I don't know if I like using this as a as a um, pancake swirl. 
I mean, we might be able to use it as a syrup or something, but I don't think I'm going to add any more to it. Which is okay. I mean, it doesn't hurt. You try something. If it's not working, don't force it. Just say, yeah, that's not working. We'll use it for something else, you know? Don't feel bad or like a failure if something happens. If it doesn't work out, that's the whole fun of experimenting. Now, the second side does not take as long as the first. It's not ready. <laughs> She's not ready, Captain. And then for the syrup, I have some homemade apple cinnamon syrup. This is what I made last year. It's my very last one, so I will be making some more. But I thought that this would go really good on our pumpkin cakes. And that's what's for breakfast. All right, guys, for today's breakfast, I'm gonna use some of these bagels. And then I got good old bologna here. And one slice of American cheese. I don't usually have American cheese, but I did a clean out move this weekend and they had a bunch of food they let me take. And that was one of them. So the kids will be happy. But this is actually for her husband. So he's also happy. So I'm just going to make a bologna egg and cheese bagel for him. He's going to be headed out early to try and go hunting again. Well, not try. He is going to go hunting and he's going to try to catch something. So he's hungry. It's super early, like 5.30. You're lucky I love you, husband. At my stove right now. But give him the energy to get us a deer. So one of the bagels, these ones already come pre-cut or pre-sliced which is nice. I'm gonna get this in the toaster oven. We had a someone, a visitor last night from the garage. Somebody's getting tall enough to get out of their box. Great, what are you doing in my kitchen? You can't just come in here and pick all the scraps off the floor. Uh, I guess we have a pet chicken now, guys. Oh my gosh. Bad enough having kids in my kitchen all the time. Now we're gonna have a chicken. I'm just gonna plop down. Yes. Get her lubed up. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Put the bologna on there first. What kind of bologna sandwiches do you guys like? What do you like on your bologna? My dad told me the other day that he makes peanut butter and jelly with a slab of cold bologna in the middle. And I'm like, what? He's like, it's good. I'm like, I don't know, Dad. You're pretty weird. Don't know where I could have possibly gotten my weirdness from, you know. <laughs> That looks pretty good. I'm just going to take it off for now. I'll throw my slice of cheese on there to get it start melting. Yeah. My six-year-old six is up hurting the chicken now. I got one farm fresh egg. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? I love the little freckles. We are slowly developing a love for chickens in this household, guys. Alright, so I have my high at a medium, which is just like a five for me. I'm gonna poke it in the eye. My husband does not enjoy runny eggs. I know, it's one of his few flaws, but I'll take them anyway. Here, put some pepper. Where's my salt? Come on. And some salt. Wow. And I'm just going to slowly kind of work it loose as I feel it sticking. Make sure it's all loose before I try and flip. And then I like to get it under one side here. You got to go fast when you're getting under something to flip. Yeah. A little bit more salt. And put that on top there. 
turn this off, put a lid on it, just to get that melting. That's our bagel. Yep, he's getting a kid plate this morning. He don't mind. He don't mind. Then we like mayonnaise on our breakfast sandwiches. So I'm going to put a little bit of mayo on there. Mama, it looks like, it looks like cake. It does kind of look like cake. It's his bagel. I'm going to make you one too, a cold one. Oh, sit down. Where are they at? Let's see if I can cut this in half for them. It's a little more manageable. Make sure I don't have any runny egg for him. He'll send it back to the kitchen if it is. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, and that's for breakfast. I hope you enjoyed a couple of the different breakfasts I enjoy making for my family on Sundays. I just want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to hang out with me and watch what I'm doing in the kitchen and just to follow along in my family journey. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Bairds.